everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome back to the spring campaign for Arkham Horror, the card game. Last week we had Jenny and Luke's third scenario on the dream side, so now we're over to Sister Mary and Trish on the waking side for their third scenario, Point of No Return. First up, let's set the scene for this scenario. Scenario 3B, Point of No Return. Check campaign log. If Randolph did not survive the descent, proceed to intro 1. If Randolph survived the descent, skip to intro 2. Alright, so checking the campaign log, we saw see that Randolph did not survive the descent, so we're on to intro 1. Intro 1. You have finally reached the Dreamlands, but it is not as you expected. The Cyclopean Cavern is far from the wondrous lands and fabulous cities described in Virgil Gray's hat writings. Perhaps the author never ventured this far underground, never found the horrors that, leak beneath, that lurk beneath the surface of the dreamlands. You suspect he wouldn't have left out tales of such a spine-chilling nature. As you venture into the dark and barren realm, you are filled with hollow despair, an emptiness that gnaws at your heart and mirrors the bleak landscape all around you. You came here to help your friends, and now your only guide through this realm is gone. What if this was all a horrible mistake? You shake these dark thoughts from your mind and focus on the path that lies ahead of you. It's too late to dwell on what could have been on what you could have done differently. This is your way forward now. Even if you cannot help your friends, even if you are too late to help Randolph, you have another mission now. Clearly this region of the Dreamlands has something to do with the creatures invading your reality. The answers must lie here. Besides, it's not like you have much choice anymore. You walk to the jagged edge of a cliff to to the edge of a jagged cliff overlooking the cavernous realm below. This realm is staggeringly vast. In the distance, along the cliffs, you see a walled city of all things. Among its many towers, a black spire rises so high it must pierce the surface of the dreamlands. To the south is a stretch of plains that looks over the vale below, and you can see shapes moving throughout the gray phosphorescent light. You hope the beings who inhabit this realm are ones you might be able to reason with. You have your doubts. But at least now you have a plan. Whether or not it is a good plan remains to be seen. Proceed to set up. As they say, no plan survives contact with the enemy, so we'll find out soon enough on that. Now let's go through the tarot reading. So on the good side, we left the Hermit 9, which increases each investigator's maximum hand size by 3, which means maximum hand size will be 11. I previously miscalculated that on a much earlier campaign when I was first using the tarot cards, but I've now since got that straight. On the bad side, we left the we flipped the Devil 15. So each investigator has three fewer slots, each of a different type, chosen by that investigator when the game begins. Both ladies will lose their tarot, body, and an arcane slot. So we've got all that sorted out on the tarot front. Next up, let's take a look at opening hands. To change a, change a pace, Trish will be our lead investigator this time around. So in her hand, I suspect her first action will be playing out Leo De Luca, the, the Louisiana Lion. Too many L's in that name. Five costs to play, Loron Commit. You may take an additional action during your turn. Two health, two sanity on Soak. true understanding that we can only commit to a skill test from an ability printed on a scenario card. If this test is successful, discover one clue at your location, and it's a wild card to commit. Next up... is backstab at a three cost to play. Combat agility on commit. Fight using agility instead of combat and deal plus two damage. Dream Diary Untranslated, two cost to play, will on commit. Action, search your bonded cards for essence of the dream and add it to your hand. And after you succeed by three or more during a skill test in which essence of the dream is committed, record in your campaign log you have interpreted the dreams. And... Quick thinking, wild card on commit. If this skill test is successful by two or more, you may immediately take an action as if it were your turn. This action does not count toward the number of actions you can take each turn. Then looking at Sister Mary's hand, we're going to start off with two copies of 
Vicious Blow level 2. Two combat each on commit. If the skill test is successful during an attack, the attack deals plus 1 damage. Plus 2 damage instead if you succeed by 2 or more. Then we've got a copy of 1-2 Punch. Two cost to play, combat on commit. Fight with plus 1 for the attack. If you succeed, you may fight that enemy again with a plus 2 combat and deal plus 1 damage for that attack. Then a Monster Slayer, zero cost to play, wild card on commit. Fight, the attack deals plus one damage. And a Machete. Action, three cost to play, combat on commit. Action, fight with plus one combat for the attack. If the attacked enemy is the only enemy engaged with you, this attack deals plus one damage. As usual, we'll go through all flavor text when we actually play cards out. Next up, let's take a look at our starting act and agenda decks. First up, we'll take a look at the act. A Sinister Realm. The underworld is a cavernous realm, almost another world unto itself. Its ceiling is so far in the distance that it might as well be a somber, overcast sky. The walls of the cavern are dimly lit by a flickering gray light with no apparent source. You wander through the twisting catacombs in search of the way forward, but you can't shake the feeling that you're being followed. Five Doom to advance. And then our starting act. Entering the Underworld, version 1. You have succeeded in reaching the Dreamlands, but this is not quite what you expected. You are in the Underworld, and it will take some work to find your bearings in this sinister place. Forced, after an enemy with one or more clues on it is defeated, take control of each of those clues. Objective, explore this region. You will be instructed when to advance. Oh, delightful! Seems to be a case of find an objective on a scenario card and complete it to advance. That's always fun. Anyway, last up, the ladies will move over to the map, so let's join them there. Sister Mary and Trish are starting out at the Vaults of Zen. Shroud of Three, Two Clues, Veiled, which means there's going to be story text on the back that we're not going to want to flip until and resolve until we actually are ready for it. For this is the mouth of the Vaults of Zen, and the vindictive guests are always on watch there, murderously for those denizens of the Upper Abyss who hunt and prey on them. H.P. Lovecraft, The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, Victory One. Okay, I think we are all set to go. Let me just double check to make sure I got the blessed tokens in as part of setup for Sister Mary. I see one in the bag. There should be two in here as part of setup. But I can't seem to find... Oh, there they are. Never mind. I just wanted to make sure I had all that straight, so we'll just get the bag all set up. I'll give it a quick mix up off camera. Okay. I think we're all set there, so our first investigation phase will start us off with Trish and we'll stay right here at the map. As I telegraphed for action one for Trish, it is indeed going to be to play out Leo De Luca, the Louisiana Lion. I was born in Mississippi. Louisiana just sounded better. Leo De Luca, the Mississippi Lion? Well, I'd have, been, I'd have an easier time saying it any, at any rate. I don't know if it sounds better necessarily than the, the Louisiana Lion. It definitely gets you tongue-tied when you are trying to say Leo De Luca, the Louisiana Lion. Okay, I said it fine there, but you know what I mean. Anyway, action two. We are going to investigate up one. The question is, do I want to commit quick thinking to try to get an extra action now? Mm, I think I'd rather save that for a test I'm more sure of. If my first ally had been Milan, I probably would have been a lot warmer to committing to using quick thinking there. 
because I would be up three on that. As it is, I'd only be up two. So I think we're just going to test up one. A plus one gets us a clue and it would have gotten us an extra action. Action three, we'll run the investigate back. A zero gets us the last clue, and we'll go ahead and flip the Vault of Zin here. So we'll see what's on the back here. Ghastly Tunnels. Hisses and uncanny voices pursue you throughout this web of darkened, intersecting tunnels. You believe the myriad paths might lead all the way to the surface of the Dreamlands. Considering the vastness of this network of caverns, it is a wonder you can even find your way back to where you started. However, you are not alone when you emerge. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a ghast enemy and spawn it here exhausted and with one clue on it. Shuffle the encounter deck. Flip this card back over. Let's see, so we want a ghast out of the deck. Um, let's see, yep. There's one we can take. Okay. We'll take a look at our hunting gas that can't, comes out. Hunter, prey most damage. Force, after hunting gas enters a location with a gug enemy, ready each gug enemy at its location and deal one damage to hunting gas. So he comes in exhausted with the clue on him. And then for action four... Hmm... If City of the Gugs does what I think it does, based on some of the setup instructions, I'm not sure I want to have Trish end there. But I might have to. Yeah, I think we're going to move her down to the City of the Gugs. We've got the Shroud of Two and the Two Clues there already, but we have a Forced. After you enter City of Gugs, flip it over and resolve the text on its other side. Carter followed the loping three out of the forest of monoliths and onto the dark, noisome streets of that awful city whose rounded towers of Cyclopean stone soared up beyond the site. H.P. Lovecraft, The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, Victory 1. Flips in two. It flips. The Sentry. The Kingdom of the Gugs is surrounded by a colossal wall. Inside, cylindrical towers rise high into the mist, each one windowless and made of gray stone, with large looming doorways at the bottom. One black tower stands paramount among the others, rising into the very ceiling of the underworld. You don't make it very far before you spot the sentry standing guard outside the city's walls, a tremendous creature with huge furry arms and an obscene toothy maw extending vertically through its head. Spawn the set-aside Gug Sentinel enemy at this location with one per investigator or two clues on it. Test Agility 3. If you succeed, Gug Sentinel enters play exhausted and unengaged. Otherwise, it enters play engaged with you. Oh, delightful. So we'll bring the Gug Sentinel out with two clues on it. Gug Sentinel, 5, 2, 3. Actually, it's plus two per investigator health, so six. Forced, after Gug Sentinel readies, deal one horror to each investigator at its location. Them two pink eyes shone, and the head of the awakened Gug Sentry, large as a barrel, wobbled into view. H.P. Lovecraft, The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, Victory 1. Two, hell, two damage and a sanity on attack. And then we need to test Agility 3 
to determine if it comes into play making friends with Trish or exhausted and unengaged. So, um, hmm. I guess the question is, would that count as an ability on a scenario card? And I think it would. So with that in mind, I'm up one. I'm going to commit quick thinking to go up two and true understanding to go up three. Which means I can potentially get a clue off the location if I succeed and an extra action if I succeed by two or more. Right now, I'm up three. Elder thing is nothing good. Minus three. If you fail by two or more, choose a ready enemy at your location or a connecting location. That enemy moves to your location, engages you, and makes an immediate attack. Fortunately, we don't fail. We don't get the action from quick thinking, but that was just the risk we took. We do, however, get the clue off the location. Because true understanding was committed to a test on a scenario card. So we do get the clue. And then after you discover one or more clues at a location with an enemy, either discover one additional clue at that location. This is Trisha's special ability I'm looking at, by the way. After you discover one or more clues at a location with an enemy, either discover one additional clue at that location or automatically evade that enemy. Limit once per round. Now, it's already, the Gug Sentinel's already coming in unengaged, so I'm going to just take the, take the clue off the location. But I don't get the action, so that will do it for Trish. Now for Sister Mary's turn, I think we are going to stay right here at the map. So for action one, um, she's going to be at a three to a two right now with Monster Slayer. Um, we're probably going to need to send her in to deal with this Gug Sentinel. But I think her first order of business is going to be playing out her machete. Which we saw earlier in her opening hand. Action two, she's going to try to fight the mon try to fight the hunting ghast to deal plus one damage. So she's at a three to a two. She's up one. And a zero will take out the hunting ghast nice and easily. Which also gives Sister Mary control of the clue. And then for action three, Sister Mary's probably our best chance to deal with this Gug Sentinel. So I'm going to move her down to the city of the Gugs with Trish. That'll do it for Sister Mary. That'll do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, the Gug Sentinel's exhausted and the hunting ghast has been defeated. So I'll wake everybody up including the Gug Sentinel, who we'll give to Sister Mary. Reset actions. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Trish will gain one resource. Sister Mary will gain one and go to three. Trish will draw. Lockpicks. Three cost to play. Lore on commit. Action. Exhaust lockpicks. Add your agility to your skill value for this investigation. If you don't succeed by at least two, discard lockpicks. Sister Mary will draw. Read the signs. Two cost to play. Will lore on commit. Investigate plus will to your skill value for this investigation. You may ignore any effect or keyword on your location which would trigger during this investigation. If you succeed, discover one additional clue at your location. Mythos phase, we put our first doom up on the agenda. Trish will draw. Whispers of Hypnos, uh-oh. Peril, revelation, choose a skill. Lore, will, combat, or agility. For the remainder of the round, each investigator gets minus two to the chosen skill. 
You can't cho choose a skill that has already been chosen by a copy of this effect this round. No god or daemon could have aspired to discoveries and conquests like those which we planned in Whispers. H.P. Lovecraft, Hypnos. Um, hmm. Well, Sister Mary needs her is going to need her combat to fight. Hmm. I think we're going to go with agility. And then Sister Mary will draw. Grasping, uh-oh. Grasping hands. Revelation test agility 3. For each point you fail by, take 1 damage. Decaying hands rise up from below and grasp and claw at your ankles. Well, we immediately per imperiled agility. So let's, let me just make a note here. Just so, just so I can remember. Well, Sister Mary is now down two, just like that, on her grasping hands. But of course we had no way of knowing that was going to come out right away. So, since we don't have any agility that we want to come... Uh, hmm... Sister Mary's down one, but there are enough effects in the bag right now that we still could end up at a zero. But I really don't want Sister Mary to be taking three damage right away, especially if we can't kill this Gug Sentinel. Trish is probably going to have to engage it off of Sister Mary after Sister Mary's turn is over if it's still alive. Uh, backstab would bring her up to a two. And I think... I think that's it. Trish is going to commit backstab to this for Sister Mary to bring Sister Mary down one, and we're hoping for a pull. Cultist is not likely to be pretty. Reveal another token. If you fail, after the skill test ends, draw the top card of the encounter deck. So we're still up, we're still down one. There we are. Bless puts Sister Mary up one. Elder Sign. Sister Mary's Elder Sign is... Come on. Plus one. If you succeed, add one add one blessed token to the chaos bag. Somehow, Sister Mary is going to survive this. Survive this is going to pass this test cleanly. Which reminds me, I should have put in a blessed token at the end of the round. There should be so there should be three in the bag right. There should be two in the bag right. In, actually, there should have been three in the bag heading into that test. I'm not going to retest it. There's effectively still going to be three. Um, actually. Do I want to return that bless to the bag because I have Sacred Covenant? Alright, so let's just go through the numbers here. I put the Elder Sign back in. Alright, I was down one. The Elder Sign for Sister Mary is a plus one, so I will exhaust the Sacred Covenant to return that bless to the bag since I ended up not needing it. Because the Elder Sign gave me the boost I needed, so now there are four bless tokens in the bag. I'd rather have those blessed tokens in the bag for when Sister Mary goes to try to attack this Gug Sentinel this round. So right now, yes, we have four blessed tokens in the bag. Which means I'll adjust our handy dandy bless and curse counter. So glad that came out with the Feast of Hemlock Veil. Vale. But that's all done. So now we're set for the investigation phase and Sister Mary 
Can we please come deal with this Duck Gug Sentinel in your play area? We can? Great, we'll see you down there. Action one, stabby time. We're gonna use the machete and commit a vicious blow to this, which is only gonna put Sister Mary up one, but I think that's the best we can do unless, I was gonna say, unless Trish had surprise had extra combat in her hand, but she doesn't. So Sister Mary is up one, hoping for a pull to do a lot of damage here. We'd be doing base one, two, three damage if this vicious blow succeeds. If we somehow get a pull that boosts Sister Mary above that, then we would be doing four damage potentially. But let's go to the bag. Minus one, just calculating the numbers again. I think we were up one, so a minus one means we will do three damage because base one plus the machete plus vicious blow for success. So yes, we do three damage. We don't get the extra damage from the vicious blow. So three damage on the sentinel. Action two, we're going to run that back. I need the vicious blow again. Uh, do I need the Vicious Blow? That would put me up one. <sighs> the one-two punch would get me to even. Even and hope for a pull is... Well, even and hope for a pull is not that bad an idea, probably, with four Bless Tokens in the bag, so we're going to commit one-two punch. I'll see if I can save the Vicious Blow for another attack. Or for another enemy. A plus one takes out the Gug Sentinel, shockingly enough. Which means Sister Mary gets the two clues, and the Gug Sentinel goes in the victory display. Very nicely done, Sister Mary. And here I was having some apprehensions about your combat ability. Let's see, then action three will take us over to... Hmm... Action 3 will take us over to the map, actually. I really do have to remember to have a little more faith in my nun's combat abilities, because in the last year's Summer of Lovecraft, Sister Mary actually stole the Elder Torah game for us against Yig, pretty much by herself with a Gatling gun, but I'm getting off track here. Action 3 will take us over to the Tower of Koth. Shroud of 5, no clues. As an action, test Agility 5 to lift, lift the heavy stone trap door at the top of the tower. If you succeed, flip this card over and resolve the text on its, on its other side. You are surprised to find that none of the creatures that dwell within the city seem to reside within this vast structure at the heart of the city. Aside from the strange sign upon the tower's doorway, it is barren and devoid of any decoration or purpose. That will do it for Sister Mary. Trish, hmm, what is Trish going to do here? I think for action one, we're going to split, I think we're going to split them up. So, Trish is going to move over to the Vaults of Zin for action one. Action two is going to take her over to the Path of the Ghouls, and we'll take a look at that. Or Plane of the Ghouls, I should say. Shroud of Four, Two Clues, also Veiled. Gug enemies cannot enter the Plane of the Ghouls. If a Gug enemy would spawn at the Plane of the Ghouls, spawn it at the City of Gugs instead. The Ghouls were in general respectful. Even if one did attempt to pinch him while several others eyed his leanness speculatively. H.P. Lovecraft, The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, Victory 1. Okay, we got the two clues there already. Action... Th let's see, that was Action 2, actually. Action three, Trish is going to draw a card. She will draw. Quick thinking, which we saw earlier and couldn't get to work for us. Action four, Trish is going to draw another card. She will draw. A cold lexicon, two cost to play, lore on commit. Limit one per deck. Forced, after a cold lexicon enters play, 
Search your bonded cards for three copies of Blood Raid. Add one to your hand and shuffle the other two into your deck. When a called lexicon leaves play, find each of those copies of Blood Raid, even if they're out of play, and set them aside out of play. All right, that'll do it for Trish. That'll do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, Sister Mary's busy cleaning off her machete after she took out the Gug Sentinel. So we'll reset everything. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Trish will gain one resource and go to two. Sister Mary will gain one and go to four. Trish will draw. Another copy of Leo De Luca, which we don't need. Sister Mary will draw. Attichophobia, oh joy. Revelation, put it into play in your threat area. Forced, after you fail a skill test, take one horror. Two actions to discard it. Delightful. Mythos phase, doom on the agenda goes up to two. Whispers of Hypnos should also go away. Trish will draw. Dissonant Voices. Revelation, put it into put, put Dissonant Voices into play in your threat area. You can't play assets or events. Forced. At the end of the round, discard Dissonant Voices. Sister Mary will draw. Ancient Evils. Oh, goody. Revelation, place one Doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Dark Forces stir against you. If you don't act quickly, a sinister plot will be fulfilled. That'll put us up to three Doom on the agenda, but we won't advance the agenda. So, this is probably going to be a quick, pretty quick investigation phase. Let's move over to the map, and we'll start off with Sister Mary. I'm terrible at remembering for Sister Mary. End of round, less tokens should have gone into the bag, so we're up to five. First two actions are going to be to discard a Tichophobia, because I think we're going to be... We might be at this test for a little while with Sister Mary. Action three, we're going to attempt the action test on the Tower of Koth. And I hate using a vicious blow to get her to even. But, hmm. I hate the idea of using this vicious blow on something that's not an attack. And we've got... Well, we've also got five blessed tokens in the bag. Uh, Sacred Covenant should be awake. <sighs> yeah, I think we're going to do it. So we're going to use a Vicious Blow to get Sister Mary up to even. Like I said, it's not an idea I like, but we're going to do it anyway. So Sister Mary is at even. Minus one fails, which is unfortunate, but it's a good thing we got rid of that attichophobia for Sister Mary. So that'll do it for her. Trish is going to start investigating since we can't play assets or events this round. For action one, she's going to investigate and commit Leo De Luca to go up one. That's a zero, which gives her a clue. Action two, she's going to run the investigation back, this time at even. And have the same result. That'll give her a clue, and it'll let us flip over the plane of the ghouls. So let's take a look here. Right. If the investigators possess fewer than three per investigator clues as a group, which we don't, we actually spend enough. We actually have enough. So we have six clues. Having spent considerable time exploring the upper layer, you understand the ghoul's nature a bit more. They are more welcoming than their kin have been in the past, speaking to you in grunting, monosyllabic English. 
As you consider your options, you are approached by one of their kind who still wears human clothing. Unlike the rest, he is able to communicate with you perfectly. With an air of authority and wisdom about him, he demands to know why you have come to this place. The investigators must spend three per investigator or six clues as a group. Advance the current act, flip this card back over. So we do have the six clues. I'm going to spend all three of Sister Mary's and three of Trish's. I think she's got, I've got a plan in her deck. So I want to keep Trish with enough clues to be able to use that decently just in case. So now we'll advance the current act. And it'll flip into. A mournful ally. You launch into a panicked explanation of everything that's happened to you. When the ghoul hears the name Randolph Carter, his demeanor changes. He asks you what has become of Randolph, and you tell him of his friend's fate. Sadness overcomes the creature. He introduces himself as Richard Pickman, and tells you that Randolph was once his friend. He agrees to let you pass in peace, but not before giving you a warning. Strange happenings have been occurring within the underworld. He tells of dark forces spreading throughout the veil below the plain of the ghouls, of vile weavers that crawl along the cavern walls, and of a terrible howling cry that penetrates throughout the realm. All of it, he explains in gibbering speech, emanates from one place, an ocean of pitch in the realm's deepest layer. Put each set-aside veil location into play. Find each card from the ghoul's encounter set and the striking fear encounter set, even if they're out of play. Remove them from the game. Shuffle the set-aside Terror of the Veil and Night Gaunt's encounter sets into the encounter deck, along with the discard pile. I'm going to shut the camera off so I can do all of that. Then we'll come back to look at how the maps changed, and then Trish will have two actions left after that. We've picked up four new locations down here for the Veil locations. We've got the Crag of the Ghouls, Sea of Bones, Veil of, N of Panath, and the Peaks of Thok. I'll go through each of those as we move into them. But Trish has two actions left. Action three, she's going to move. Let me just make sure. There should be a third connection there. Um... Oh, there's a direct connection from the Plane of the Ghouls to the City of the Gugs. I did not realize that. Alright, that won't really... Well, that might get... That'll get Sister Mary over there a little bit faster. Which is probably going to be the plan next turn. Action 3, Trish is going to move down to the Crag of the Ghouls. We'll take a look at this. Shroud of Three, Four Clues. Veiled. The first treachery drawn during the Mythos phase by an investigator at this location gains Surge. At last he discerned above him the, pro the projecting edge of the Great Crag of the Ghouls, whose vertical side he could not glimpse. H.P. Lovecraft, The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, Victory won. And I think we'll put Trish to work on trying to discover clues here for Action 4. She's up 1, and I'm going to commit Quick Thinking to go up two, see if I can get an extra action out of this. Bless, which puts Trish up four. Cultist, as we saw earlier, reveal another token. If you fail, draw the top card of the encounter deck. Trish is still up four at any location. Okay, I was checking on Sister Mary's Sacred Covenant. A bless, which means Sister Mary's or Trish is up six. Skull is minus X, where X is the amount of damage on the card, it's zero. So Sister Mary is going to exhaust Sacred Covenant to keep those two blesses in the bag, which will give Trish a clue and an action from Quick Thinking, which will be another investigation. She's up one this time.
That's a bless, so Trish is up three. Rune, which is usually not good. Plus one. The black cat helps you navigate through the death fire. If this token is revealed during an investigation and you succeed, draw one card. I think this may be the only campaign where the rune and the elder thing both have a chance of being good. But that's the but that bless is staying out of the bag, and Trish will draw. Pilfer. Four cost to play, lore, agility, and commit. Investigate using agility instead of lore. If you succeed, discover two additional clues. But Trish will get a clue off the location. That will do it for Trish. That'll do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase. Sister Mary's machete is all nice and shiny waiting for a new enemy because we have none in play right now. So, we'll reset everything. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Trish will gain one resource and go to three. Sister Mary will gain one and go to five. Trish will draw. In the shadows, zero cost to play, two agility, two wild card on commit. Trish Scarborough deck only. Fast, play after your turn begins. Disengage from each enemy engaged with you. Until the end of the round, enemies can't engage you and you can't deal damage to enemies. That could be handy if we draw something big. Sister Mary will draw. Evidence. Fast, one cost to play, two lore on commit. Fast, play after you defeat an enemy. Discover one clue at your location. Sacred Covenant should also be unexhausted. At the end of the round, Blessed Token going into the bag, which will put us up to five Blessed Tokens in the bag. Mythos phase, fourth doom on the agenda. Trish will, dr Trish will draw. Peril Whispers of Hypnos. Oh joy. And I have to remember that the first treachery drawn here for Trish gains Surge. Um, I think we're going to imperil Agility again. And then this is surging for Trish into... Lit by Deathfire. Revelation. Each investigator loses one resource. Each investigator at a Veil or Depth location chooses and discards one card from their hand. Each investigator at a Depth location loses an action. So Sister Mary... So they'll both lose the resource they just gained in the upkeep phase. Trish is back down to two. Sister Mary is down to four. Trish is at a Veil location, so she also has to discard a card. She will discard... She'll discard Dream Diary. So this is round three. I have to remember there was an Ancient Evils. And we're imperiling Agility again. Sister Mary will draw... Another lit by death fire, so Trish is getting her resources and her hand both decimated. And then Trish has got to discard again. She will discard this time. Uh, she's going to discard... Ugh, I don't want to discard any of these, but I think we're going to lose Pilfer. Because we're about a million miles away from being able to play that out. So, that'll do it for Trish. That'll do it for the, invest that'll do it for the Mythos phase investigation phase, and I think we're going to move over to Sister Mary, and her turn's going to be very quick as we move over to the map. Action one, Sister Mary will move into the city of Gugs. I was just checking the card before I turned the camera back on. It didn't specify to pull the Gug Sentinel out of the victory display, so I'm going to rule that it stays in the victory display. Action two, she's going to move to the Plane of the Ghouls. And action three, I think she's going to move down to the Crag of the Ghouls, because that's the first treachery drawn by an investigator. So since Trish goes first, her card would gain Surge as if she's still there, and she might be. 
But that will do it for Sister Mary. Speaking of Miss Trish, I think action one is going to be to investigate. She's up one. Elder thing is most likely not good. Minus three. If you fail by two or more, choose a ready enemy at your location or a connecting location. That enemy moves to your location, engages you, and makes an immediate attack. We have no enemies in play right now, so that doesn't do anything against us. Action two will run the investigation back. Tentacle touched. Delightful. Action three will try it again. Bless, so we're up three. Elder thing, which we were just up three, so Trish will get a clue off the location, and I will exhaust the Sacred Covenant to keep the Bless in the bag. Action four, we'll run it back. Skull is still a minus zero because there's no damage on the scenario card, which means we'll get the last clue off the location. And are we going to flip that over? E Let's sit tight on flipping that over. We can flip that over as a fast action anyway, I believe. Yes. As a fast action, we can flip that over. Okay. So that will do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, we still have no enemies in play. So we'll flip all, we'll flip everything over. I didn't bother flipping over Sister Mary's action tokens because she was just zipping across the map. But we're going to move back up top for the upkeep phase. Trish gains one resource and goes to two. Sister Mary gains one and goes to four. Trish will draw. 21 or bust. Two cost to play. Agility. Combat on commit. One at a time. Reveal random tokens from the chaos bag until you choose to stop. Treat each bad symbol except the tentacle as a 5. The tentacle is a 10. And the elder sign is either a 1 or an 11. If the combined value of these tokens, ignoring plus or minus, is 18 or less, gain 4 resources. 19 gain 5. 20 gain 6. 21 gain 9. We might need to do some resource generation with Trish. Sister Mary will draw another copy of Evidence. End of the round, Whispers of Hypnos goes away. We put another Bless token in the bag, which will bring us up to six Bless tokens in the bag. Mythos phase, we are advancing the agenda. So let's see what's on the back here. The path darkens. A sudden wave of pain and nausea passes over you, and for a brief moment it seems the very fabric of reality is tearing apart. The feeling passes quickly, but it's obvious that something is not quite right. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the deck, and place one damage on the scenario reference card. So we'll put a damage on... I'm going to find my spin down dice for this, because those have been very helpful for... Here we go. A spin down is going to be a lot easier to track the damage on than stacking up a mess of damage tokens on there. So now there's one damage on there. The only thing that's affecting right now is the skull in the chaos bag. So that makes the skull now a minus one that we need to be concerned about. 
Shuffling the encounter deck back in. We're shuffling the discard pile back into the deck. Give it one more shuffle and a cut. And we'll take a look at our agenda. Agenda 2A, Beset by Monsters. As you continue to explore, the creatures of the underworld grow agitated and begin to pursue you, as if compelled by some unseen force. Hint, the game will not necessarily end when the, this agenda advances, but the stability of reality will continue to unravel. For Doom to advance. Joy. Trish will draw. Dole Tunnel. If Slithering Dole is in play, it moves and attacks as if it were the enemy phase. Otherwise, attach Dole Tunnel to a location at least two lo connections away from the nearest Dole Tunnel or your location if you cannot. Then, if Slithering Dole is in the victory display, spawn at an attached location, exhausted. So we're going to attach it to the Crag of the Ghouls. But because it's an encounter card being drawn at the Crag of the Ghouls, it'll surge for Trish into... Unexpected Ambush. If there are no enemies in play, take one damage and one horror, and there are not any enemies in play. So Trish will just take one and one. And then Sister Mary will draw... Another Ancient Evils. Delightful. But at least we didn't have too many problems this time. Which means the plan I have for Trish can go into motion. So let's move over to the map and see what Trish is doing this turn. Action 1 for Trish is going to be to move over to the Sea of Bones. We'll take a look at this location, even though it's not our ultimate destination for Trish. Shroud of Two, Two Clues. Forced, after you discover one or more clues at Sea of Bones, flip it over. There was nothing anywhere but blackness and horror and silence and bones. H.P. Lovecraft, The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, Victory One. Action Two is going to take us down to Trish's ultimate destination, the Peaks of Thok. Shroud of Three, No Clues. Action test agility 5 to attempt to scale the treacherous peaks. If you succeed, flip this card over and resolve the text on its other side. Forced, when you leave Peaks of Thok, you must test agility 2 to climb down safely. If you fail, take 1 damage. That's ultimately what I've got in mind, is we're going to make that test. Trish right now is based down 1, but committing in the shadows is going to put her up three instead, and I've got six blessed tokens in the bag to help us out. Well, to hopefully help us out. That's a bless, so we're up, what were we at? Eight to five, that's a 10 to a five, so we're up five. Minus one, so four, and I think we're going to let one blessed token leave the bag. So Trish passes the test, which means we're up, to, we're down to five blessed tokens in the bag, and we get to flip over Peaks of Thok and resolve the text. Inhabitants of the Vale, you climb to the top of the hazardous peaks to survey the lands below. From this vantage point, you are able to see the movements of the various creatures that live in the Vale. Soaring all around the peaks are black, winged things that somehow scowl at you with empty, expressionless faces. Upon the cliff that hangs over the Vale, ghoul eyes watch your progress with morbid curiosity. The mound of bones and de detritus below the precipice is home to nothing but the churning and dredging of something massive under the surface. To your left, the misty veil extends for miles until it reaches an enormous stone wall. Opposite the wall, far in the distance, you barely make out the shape of a city in the darkness. 
Incomprehensible whispers and mocking laughter seep into your ears. You dare no further study. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a hunting night gaunt enemy and spawn it at Vale of Panath exhausted. Each investigator at Peaks of Thok may draw two cards. Choose any enemy in play and place two clues on it. Flip this card back over. So we get a hunting night gaunt out of the deck. There we are. We'll give that a quick shuffle. We'll give the deck a quick shuffle. Then we'll take a look at the Hunting Night Gaunt before it goes to the Vale of Panath Exhausted. 341 Hunter. While attempting to evade Hunting Night Gaunt, double the negative modifier of each revealed cast token. They had no faces at all to smile with, but only a suggestive blackness where a face ought to be. HP Lovecraft, 1 and 1 on attack. So it gets two clues. And then Trish gets to draw two cards. So Trish first up will draw. Deduction level 2, 2 lore on commit. If the skill test is successful on investigating a location, discover one additional clue at that location. Two instead if you succeed by two or more. And... Investments, one cost to play, lore on commit. Uses zero supplies, limit ten supplies on investments. As an action, exhaust investments to place one supply on it. Exhaust and discard investments. Move all supplies from it to your resource pool as resources. Okay. And action four. Mm. I think for action four, we're gonna, we flip that back over. So it's action one to move, two to move, three to test, four. She's going to move to the Vale of Panath. That'll do it for Trish. Sister Mary is also going to move down to the Vale of Panath. We have to remember that while there are clues remaining there, investigators here can't play cards or commit cards to skill tests. Action two. We can't play anything, so I do need to bear that in mind. I think we just start attacking, though. So Sister Mary will... Sister Mary will engage the Night Gaunt, make sure it comes to her when it's her turn, and then action when it wakes up in the upkeep phase, then action three, she'll attack it with a machete, she's up one. And that's a minus two, so we fail that attack. That's unfortunate, but no help for that at this point. That'll do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, the hunting night gaunt is exhausted, but it won't be for long, because it's time to wake everything up. The hunting night gaunt makes friends with Sister Mary. And then it's time to move back up top for the upkeep phase. Trish gains one resource and goes to three. Sister Mary gains one and goes to five. Trish will draw. Lola Santiago, no-nonsense archaeologist. Three cost to play, two lore on commit. You get plus one lore and plus one agility. As an action, exhaust Lola and spend X resources to discover one clue at your location where X is the shroud value of your location. Two and two and takes up an ally slot. Sister Mary will draw. Spectral Razor. Fight, two cost to play, level two. Two cost to play, will, combat, wild card on commit. Fight, plus will for the, for the attack. Immediately before the attack, you may engage the attacked enemy. The attack deals plus one damage, plus two instead if the enemy is non-elite. And if a symbol was revealed during the attack, return Spectral Razor to your hand at the end of the turn. Mythos phase, second doom on the agenda. Trish will draw. On Wings of Darkness, Revelation, test agility four. If you fail, take one and one. 
Then disengage from each non-Nightgaunt enemy engaged with you and move to a central location. A Nightgaunt swoops down from the sky and grabs you with its clawed hands, carrying you off into the night. Delightful. And since we're at Vale of Panath with clues remaining on it, we can't commit. So Trish is at even. Also, should have put a blessed token in the bag for end of round. So we're up to... I'll reset that. I'll reset the counter after this. That's the mythos. Skull is minus one, so we do fail the test, which means Trish takes one and one. And our plan with that kind of blew up in my face, so Trish is going to end up at the Plane of the Ghouls. That's unfortunate. Sister Mary will draw. Lit by Deathfire, each investigator loses a resource, so Trish goes back down to two. Sister Mary goes back down to four. At a Veil or Depths, which Trish is not, but Sister Mary is, discards a card. And then the Depths only doesn't do anything, so... Ugh. Sister Mary's going to discard Evidence. Since we can't play it anyway at the location. Alright, so that was unfortunate. Investigation phase is going to bring... We're going to start off with Trish, and I'll meet you guys over at the map after I've got a new battery. The plan, I think, still works. It's just going to cost me a couple extra actions to get back into the location. So for action one, Trish is going to move to the Crag of the Ghouls. Action two, back down to the Vale of Panath. Action three, she's going to investigate, unfortunately at even, because we can't commit. Rune, I believe, is helpful. Yep, that's plus one. Since it's an investigation and we succeed, we draw a card. So Trish will draw. Dr. Milan Christopher, where have you been all game, my friend? Professor of Entomology. Four cost to play, lore on commit. Plus one lore, and after you succe successfully investigate, gain a resource. One health, two sanity. Trish gets the clue, and because we've got the Night Gaunt there, we've got a decision to make now. Do we take the clue or evade the enemy? I think... I think we take the clue so we can commit to trying to take out the Night Gaunt. Which means we also get to flip the Veil of Panath over. Trish, Trish has an action left, so we can get Gitfo if we need to. Let's find out what we've got there. The investigators possess way more than... I don't think we ever went through the new act, so let's go through the act real quick. Act 2A, The Descent. The way to the Veil below is treacherous. You will have to climb down from a place Pikmin calls the Crag of the Ghouls, where the creatures cast the discarded remains of their macabre meals. You can only imagine what the depths might be like. Same forest as before, and find a way to the Sea of Pitch as our objective. We'll be instructed when to advance. And as a spoiler, I think we are being instructed to advance. The investigators possess fewer than three per investigator clues, and Trish has nine by herself. You venture out into the Dark Vale and attempt to map out your surroundings. With the knowledge you have accumulated, you know that the source of the disturbances within the underworld cannot be in this region. There must be another pathway, perhaps a cavern or tunnel, that leads from the Vale to, the, to a place even deeper beneath the surface of the Dreamlands. This is not wanting to focus today. There we go. As you approach the great stone wall at the far end of the Vale, you pick up a foul scent like sulfur and tar. You follow the stench until it leads you to a wide hole in the wall. The investigators must spend three per investigator clues as a group. Advance the current act. Flip this card back over. Trish, as I mentioned, has six clues by herself. So we'll be spending those to advance the act. And this flips into... A way across. The hole becomes narrower and narrower as you make your way through the, through the other side of the stone wall. When you finally emerge, you find yourself at the shores of an enormous ocean of pitch black tar. 
Webs of glowing violet energy spread across its surface, filling you with an uneasy dread. Could this be related to the horrors you witnessed in St. Mary's Hospital? Just as you were beginning to wonder what to do next, you discover several rowboats of black wood moored in a nearby cove. The hull of each is carved with a strange insignia. Is this luck or providence? Either way, you are determined to set off across the sea and trace this madness to its source. Put each set-aside depth location into play. Shuffle the set-aside to descend into the pitch and agents of Otlock knock and encounter sets into the encounter deck, along with the discard pile. Once again, I'm going to turn the camera off and do all of that, and we'll come back with the, with the map all ready to go. The only thing that's changed on the map here is we've got our four sea of pitch locations down here. So we'll take a look at those once we move into one of those, but let's actually remember to go through the act this time. Act 3A, The Black Expanse. As you traverse the tar-like sea of pitch, you begin to discern patterns in the unearthly web that glows below its surface. Forced yada yada yada, actually forced after an enemy with one or more clues is defeated, place those clues on this act. The other ones were instructing us to take control of those clues, right? Yes. And yes, okay, so we need the clues on the act for a reason. Objective, find the source of the distortion. You will be instructed when to advance. Okay, and then action four for Trish, since she's, since she's got one more left, we're going to move down to this sea of pitch because it's the easiest one to get to. These will all be the same on this side. Shroud of X, where X is the number of damage tokens on the scenario reference card, which currently is one and two clues, and it's veiled. Deep in the vacuum's vacuous expanse lies another dimension. Will you take the plunge? Not right now she won't, because that's the end of the investigation phase. That's the end of Trisha's actions. For Sister Mary, hmm. I think we're going to make a little bit of a calculated gamble here, where Sister Mary is going to move down to join Trish, but she's going to take an attack of opportunity to do it. So she's going to initiate a move action, taking one and one to move down to the Sea of Pitch. Action two, she's going to attack with the... She attacked with the machete? Oh, I never finished fixing this. So we have six blessed tokens in the bag, and Sister Mary is going to attack with the machete. That'll put her up one. And that's where Sister Mary is going to test. I can shove a ghost knife somewhere, but I'd rather save that because I know there are more dangerous enemies that just went into the deck. So up to them. Cultist is nothing good. Cultist was reveal another token. If you fail, yada yada yada. After the test ends, draw the top card of the encounter. Elder sign, as we saw earlier, is a plus one, and if you succeed, add a blessed token to the bag. So the Night Gaunt takes two damage, and we get to add another blessed token to the bag, which puts us up to seven blesses in the bag. Then action three, Sister Mary's going to run that back with a machete. We lopped off one wing, let's see if we can get the other one. We are up one, by the way. Bless puts her up three. Puts her up five. We will be most likely using Sacred Covenant. Minus two, so we cancel one of the blessed tokens. We are going to use Sacred Covenant to keep those two blesses in the bag. The Hunting Night Gaunt has been defeated. The two clues we had go up on the act. The Night Gaunt is discarded. And then for one resource, Sister Mary is going to play Evidence. Fast play after you defeat an enemy to discover one clue at your location. 
just as I suspected. Very nicely done, Sister Mary. She's actually helping with clues this time. That'll do it for Sister Mary. That'll do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase? I don't know how clean Sister Mary's gonna get that machete in the Sea of Pitch after defeating the night, the hunting night gaunt, but that's another worry for another time. So we'll go ahead and reset everything for our ladies. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Trish will gain one resource and go to three. Sister Mary will gain one and go to four. Trish will draw. Pilfer, we saw this earlier but had to discard it. Let me just make sure hand size... I have to remember max hand size here is 11, not 8 because of the Hermit 9. 1, 2, 6, 7, 8. Okay, we're fine there. Sister Mary will draw. A 45 automatic. 4 cost to play. Agility on commit. Uses 4 ammo. Action, spend an ammo to fight, getting plus 1 combat for the attack, and deal plus 1 damage. Mythos phase, we go up to third or third Doom on the agenda. Trish will draw. A Grey Weaver, uh-oh. 453, Prey at lowest agility. Hunter. While Grey Weaver is ready, each investigator at its location can't take move actions. Victory 1, 1, and 2. Yikes. Sister Mary will draw. On Wings of Darkness, Revelation, test agility 4. Oh, this is bad. If you fail, take one and one. Then, we saw this earlier. Sister Mary is down one. We have to remember to put a bless in the bag. She's at eight. Let's see, agility. We've got a big problem on our hands. Actually, do we have that big a problem? We probably don't. Oh, yeah, we do, actually. Because if Sister Mary fails this, she goes all the way back to the plane of the ghouls. I really do not want to fail this for obvious reasons. Um, unfortunately, she's down one, but I do have eight blesses in the bag. I think we'll use the 45 automatic to get Sister Mary to even, and then Trish will commit... Trish will commit Pilfer to put Sister Mary up one. So I'm very much leaning on the eight blessed tokens we have in the bag right now to help get us clear of this test. Like that one, which puts her up three. Skull is still a minus one. I think we can let one blessed token leave the bag, and then Sister Mary survives the test on, on Wings of Darkness, which is very much a relief, because I didn't want her going anywhere for obvious reasons. Anyway, that will do it for the investigation, or for the mythos phase. Investigation phase, and I think we're going to bring Sister, we're going to move down to Sister Mary's play area. Action 1, Sister Mary is actually going to investigate. She's up 1 right now. I'm not going to use read the signs because I want to use that on a different location. Trish is going to give her investments to put her up 2. That's a minus two, so Sister Mary will get the clue off the location. And then because it's veiled, we do get to flip the sea of pitch over, so let's see what we've got on the back of here. Rolling pits. Though there is no wind in the dark caverns of the underworld, enormous maelstroms of pitch attack your vessel from all sides. You struggle to remain in control of your boat as the whirlpool hurls you into pandemonium. Set all of the clues from each sea of pitch aside. 
Discard all other tokens and attachments from each sea of pitch. Discard... Uh, flip this card back over and shuffle the positions of each copy of Sea of Pitch so you don't know which is which. Investigators and enemies remain at their current position. Dis distribute the previously set aside clues among each copy of Sea of Pitch as evenly as possible. Each Sea of Pitch may be flipped over again using their veiled keyword. Oh, great. So, we have six clues there. We're going to shuffle all of these back up. So we're at the second sea of pitch from the left. Okay. One, two, three, four. Each one gets one. And I'm going to grab a D d8 for this next part. Actually, d10 is closer. Let me see if I can... I know I've got a bag of dice in here. We go. And there's a d8 in here. Perfect. Actually, there's a d4 in here as well. I'll use that. So from e, from the, so you saw each sea of pitch. We've got it from the left. So I'm going to use a d4. One through four for each location. Where I'm going to roll this twice, and the locations that get extra, that come up, are going to get the extra clues. Four gets a clue, and now four is going to be a re-roll, because they're wanting you to distribute them as evenly as possible. Four is a re-roll, and two. So our location gets another clue on it as well. That's unfortunate, but there's no help for that at this point. Action two, what there is going to be help for, though, is we're going to shove a ghost knife somewhere it probably shouldn't go. So we're fighting plus will for the attack. Immediately before the attack, you may engage the attacked enemy. We're attacking the Grey Weaver. The attack deals plus one damage, plus two instead if the enemy is non-elite. If a symbol was revealed during the attack, return Spectral Razor to your hand at the end of your turn. I wonder if the blesses count as symbols. I would think they don't, but somebody in the comments can probably correct me on how that works. But that'll bring Sister Mary to a 7 to a 4. She's up 3. And I think Trish is going to give her... She's up 3 with 7 blesses in the bag. Never mind, Trish isn't going to commit. So Sister Mary is up 3, trying to do 3 damage. This would have been a great time to add this is flow I used earlier. Minus two means we lose the spectral razor, but the Grey Weaver will take three damage. So that's very fortunate. And then action three. We're going to try for a pull on the machete. We're at even. Now is Trish going to give her 21 or bust? Um, I wanted the resource generation, but... Um, no. We're going to rely on the blessed tokens in the bag to try to get past this Grey Weaver. So Sister Mary's even. Bless puts her up to... A zero takes out the Grey Weaver. So we can let one Bless token leave the bag. And the Grey Weaver will go to the victory display. Note to self. Don't fall asleep in Sister Mary's class, because if you think getting wrapped on the knuckles with a ruler is bad, this nun's got a machete. She might do even worse to you if, she, if you do that. Unfortunately, we don't have the 
evidence to discover another clue there. That will do it for Sister Mary, though. Trisha's turn will take us over to the map. So Sister Mary and Trish are sitting in a boat in the Sea of Pitch, and suddenly Trish for Action 1 looks at Sister Mary and says, Hey, you feel like playing a little blackjack? Sister Mary is looking, looking at Trish like, Are you crazy? We're here doing... We're here looking for the source of reality, and you want to play cards right now? Trish says, yeah, I need some resources. Sister Mary rolls her eyes, and she's like, no, but knock yourself out. So we're going to reveal tokens from the bag until we stop, to revealing each symbol except for the elder, except for the tentacle and the elder sign as a 5. Tentacle is a 10, and the elder sign is a 10 or 11. So we're going to see what resources we can get for that. First symbol, or first token. is an elder thing, so that's a five. A zero, I'm gonna bring these up here so I can see what I've pulled out so far. Six. Eight. Thirteen. Ideally, I get to 21, because that'll let me do everything I want to do this turn. Right now, I'm at 13. Eighteen. Um, Twenty lets me play both allies, but it doesn't let me... Let's see, four resources. Do I play a little... There's another question, do I play a little bit of a longer game and get one of them out? I know which ally I'd want to get out if I can only get one out. The question is, do I risk it? The question is, do I risk it and not potentially be able to play either of my allies out? And I think the answer is no. So I think here I take my 18, gain four resources, and then action two, immediately sink them into, where did he go? Here we are. And immediately sink them into Milan. Especially since the shroud's going to start climbing a little bit here. While I truly pray that this nightmare is just a singular abomination. I must admit that I am exhilarated by the possibility that this is but one specimen of a new genus. Then action three will investigate. We're up five. Skull is a minus one, so we get a clue and a resource. Up. Resource, not another clue. But action four, we will run the investigation back again. Elder sign, as we saw, is a plus two. If it's and if this is an investigation, you may choose any revealed location. You are now investigating as if you were at that location instead. I think we're just going to stick with our location because now we have the location empty again, so we get to flip this over and see what's on the back from Veiled, we find. Okay, this is where we need to be. The question is, do we have enough clues? We do. All right, if the investigators possess at least three per or six clues, you row farther out into deeper, darker waters, 
but there is still no sign of any other shore. Under the surface of the black, tarry liquid, you can see a series of glittering stars, like an unknown constellation beckoning you forward. If you didn't know any better, you would think it was a reflection of the sky above, but there is no sky in this dark realm. You lean over the edge of your boat and nearly vomit from the sensation of vertigo that assaults you. It must be hundreds of miles deep and filled with horrors beyond your imagining, and yet, you know what you must do. The investigators must spend three per investigator clues as a group, flip this card back over, and advance the current act. So, we have five clues from Trish, and one from Sister Mary that will let us advance the act. So here we find... Under the Sea of Pitch. A pit of fear grows in your chest as you gaze into the thick, dark water. This is the source. Whatever is below the surface of this sea, it holds the answer to everything that has transpired thus far in the waking world. Perhaps you can even find a way to save your friends. Or perhaps the ocean will simply swallow you alive. You have no way of knowing for certain. You stand and take a final breath, clenching your fists tightly. Then, you take a leap of faith. R1. Let's move back up top for R1. Phoenix Knight from the past. Let's make sure we've got the right file still queued up. We do. Phoenix Knight from the past. Take it away. Resolution 1. The black, tarry liquid rises around you, consuming you, and you fear that you've made a grave mistake. The pressure of the dense liquid surrounds your body, crushing you from all sides, but then you emerge on the other side. You fall for a brief, silent moment before being caught by a glowing, sinewy web. Panicking, you scramble to a nearby platform made of solid rock. Your refuge is one of many, each suspended in the air and connected by thick webbing. Beyond that is a vast, cosmic space, an infinite darkness as far, that stretches as far as the eye can see. For each damage on the scenario reference card, record one tally mark next to steps of the bridge in your campaign log. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. If you are playing the Dream Quest and the Web of Dreams as an interconnected eight-part campaign, and you have not yet played Scenario 3A, Dark Side of the Moon, proceed to that scenario. And you have already played Scenario 3A, Dark Side of the Moon, proceed instead to Interlude 3, The Great Ones, found in the Rules Insert for Dark Side of the Moon. All right, so I was making some notes as the first part of the interlude was playing. We picked up a total of seven experience because we had the Gug Sentinel and the Grey Weaver in the victory display, plus one, two, three, four, five locations that we emptied of clues. So that's where the seven experience is coming from there. There was only one damage on the scenario reference card, so only one step of the bridge. But we have now the interlude three, so I will cue that up. I said I'll cue that up. There we go. And now we'll look for interlude three. Here we go. The Great Ones. Interlude three, The Great Old Ones. Read this interlude only if you're playing the Dream Quest and the Web of Dreams as an interconnected eight-part campaign. Do not read this interlude until both scenarios 3A, Dark Side of the Moon, and 3B, Point of No Return, have been completed. The Great Ones won. Following scenario 3A, the Dreamers are on their way to the cold wastes wherein lies unknown Kadath. You are nudged out of a sleepless reverie by a furry forehead. You look down to find the black cat peering up at you. Hey, I see you've made some progress. You're not quite sure if you would call this progress. Though you're finally on your way to the cold wastes, you haven't pinned down the exact location of unknown Kadath, and you have no idea what to expect when you arrive. Check the campaign log for the Dream Quest Campaign A. Read the section below that applies to your situation, then proceed to the following text. If no section applies, skip them. Okay. I was actually searching for one of the tokens I'm going to need in a second, and I don't seem to have it here. All right. So I'm going to have to go ruffling, I'm going to have to go searching for said token. So, hold on a second. Actually, I think it's going to be in... I think the one I want is in here. But, 
Let's go ahead and move to if the dreamers grow weaker. Um, here we go. If the dreamers grow weaker, whoa, the cat says suddenly, you're not looking too good, you know. It gazes up at you with unconcerned but courteous eyes, curious eyes. You ask what it means. You can't tell? You look sick. You eating enough? Whatever, it doesn't matter. You can walk, can't you? That's good enough. Depending on your difficulty, add a token to the chaos bag for the Dream Quest Campaign A as follows. Easy minus three, standard minus four, hard minus five, expert minus seven. There's the aforementioned minus three that's going in the Dreamer's Chaos Bag. All right, we didn't ask for it, and Randolph didn't survive the voyage, and the Black Cat is not searching for the truth, so never mind that. All right, let's go to the next part of that. Uh, you ask the Black okay. Cat if it knows what you'll find in Kadath. Sort of, it answers. I've foreseen your arrival in Kadath for some time now. I've seen a lot of this, in fact, but it's not... It's well, it's not exactly, it's not playing out exactly the same way. Or maybe I just didn't see it the same way. Regardless, I think you're on the right path. After all, it's the only path that's left. I know a little more about what you'll see when you get there, but I'm afraid that if I tell you, you'll see it differently, too. Don't worry about it. You're doing fine. Get to Kadath. Find the land of the Great Ones. Everything else will fall into place when you arrive. As long as you don't mess this up. These beings that you face, the, name, the ones whose names I do not wish to speak, they don't just threaten the dreamlands. They threaten reality. They threaten existence itself. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have somewhere to be. Check campaign log. If the black cat has a hunch, it bounds off into the void of space before you get the chance to ask it anything else. Otherwise, the black cat offers to pass a message, message along to your companions. The lead investigator must decide. Choose one. Tell your companions about the threats you face. The black cat will return to you with aid once this message is delivered. This may put an undue burden on your companions. In the campaign log for the Dream Quest, Campaign A, record the black cat spoke of Nyarlathotep. Tell your companions that you will be okay. The black cat will stay with them once this message is delivered. This might make your quest a little more difficult. In the campaign log for the Dream Quest, Campaign A, Record the Black Cat Spoke of Atlak Naka. Proceed to the Great Ones 2. Okay, so before we proceed to the Great Ones 2, we've got a decision to make. Who do we warn... Which Ancient One do we warn of? Who do I think needs the help more? Um... Hmm... Well, I think the Blessed Tokens are actually helping us out a little bit more on this side. Whereas the Dreamers don't have that same benefit. So, I think... Huh. The question is, which set of decks do I think is more ready for what they're going into? I think it's probably this side that I, that's a little more ready. So, I think the Black Cat is going to speak of Nyarlathotep. So, I'm just making a note in the campaign log. Okay, so now let's go to the Great Ones 2. Um... The Great Ones 2. Here we go. Following scenario 3B, the investigators have reached a cosmic penumbra between worlds. A cat's low-pitched wail draws your attention to a nearby web. When you arrive, you find the black cat stuck on a patch of particularly sticky, sticky web, wriggling back and forth in a vain attempt to free itself. Even with its sharp claws, it seems to be in trouble. You lean over and pull the cat free, and it leaps from your arms to a rocky platform below. The only thing below the cat, between the cat and an endless void. It hisses for a moment and then stands tall. Did I ask for your help? It scolds. Well, you made it to the sea. Of, you made it below the sea of pitch after all. Now look around you. See all this webbing? You couldn't miss it even if you tried. You are surrounded on all sides by webs, treacherous pathways across the aether. It is a bridge between your world and the dreamlands. If it is completed, the two will merge. Understand? Unless you want everything to look like that hospital where your friends are sleeping, you have to stop this at all costs. 
Nothing else matters. Nothing. Check the campaign log for the Dream Quest Campaign A. Read each selection below that applies to your situation. Then proceed to the following text. If no section applies, skip them. All right, looking at the interlude, I was just doing a little bit of setup work for what's coming. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and finish that up. If I'm thinking about it here. Uh, I think I already did it. So, all right, the investigators, this is in campaign A. The investigators don't possess the silver key. Uh, the black cat is not searching for the truth. Well, it was. Uh, it was. It had a hunch, but it's not. Okay, so next part. Oh, before I forget, your friends have almost made it to their destination. If everything happens as I have foreseen, they'll be able to free themselves. In the meantime, they wanted me to let you know. Check the campaign log for the Dream Quest Campaign A. Read the section below that applies to your situation. Once the relevant entry has been read, choose and proceed to either section scenario 4A, where the gods dwell, or scenario 4B, Weaver of the Cosmos. Okay, zip it for a second, Phoenix. We'll make sure we've got the right entry. If the black cat is searching for the truth... He is not. If the black cat spoke of Atlak Naka... He didn't. If the black cat spoke of Nyarlathotep... There we go. The being they face is wanton with thousands, perhaps an endless number of masks. Nyarlathotep, it is called by some. It is manipulative, deceptive, and cunning. It is probably the thing that trapped them in the dreamlands to begin with. Why? I have no idea. If you want them to survive, they're probably going to need my help. You'll be okay here on your own, right? The black cat doesn't wait for an answer. Without another word, it leaps into the aether below and vanishes. Check both campaign logs. If neither campaign log has the black cat is at your side recorded, in the campaign log for the dream quest, campaign A, record the black cat is at your side. Add one elder thing token to the cast bags for both campaigns. If the campaign log for the Web of Dreams campaign B has the Black Cat is at your side recorded, cross it off and record it in the campaign log for the Dream Quest campaign A instead. Replace one rune token in each campaign's chaos bag with one Elder Thing token. If the campaign log for the Dream Quest campaign A has the Black Cat is at your side recorded, no changes made. I've already taken a rune out of each chaos bag. And here are the elder things going in. The fancy one's going in with the dreamers. This one's going in with the waking bag. So I'll take care of that real quick. And that's going in the dreamers bag. Okay, so that will do it for this playthrough of... Um, what's the scenario? Point of no return. I was blanking on the scenario for a second. Sometime this week I'm going to do upgrade. I've been going to do the last round of upgrades for the campaign. And then next week we're going to be, this week we're going to be actually busy on the channel. Wednesday we're going to do a play along on cartographers. More on how that will work when we get to that video. Saturday Mystical Munchies will conclude out of the Star Wars Galactic Baking Cookbook with the dessert, Tatooine Sandies. Next week we're going to take advantage of Memorial Day weekend for the end of the spring campaign. First up, the Dreamers will venture into that, their last scenario as they venture where the gods dwell. Then on Monday... The Waking Investigators will face their last scenario as they come face to face with the Weaver of the Cosmos. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.